Joaquin, welcome back, man. Uh, big fight for you, big opponent, co-main event, full crowd. How does it feel to, uh, to be days out from that? Uh, it feels good, man. This is something I've been asking for and shouting about, you know, via social media for a long time, to get that big name, to get somebody that I feel like is going to really get the respect that uh, is deserved with all the work I didn't put in. So now that I'm getting the fight that I asked for, it's a beautiful situation. Yeah, and if, if anybody scrolls through your Instagram, you know, they'll see uh, you had talked about Luke, Ian Gary, Kevin Man, Holland. Name them, I called them out, you know. Uh, but with this opportunity coming, I, I'm just appreciative of Vicente Luque actually taking on the challenge uh, because at the end of the day, you know, no matter if I want to fight him or if the UFC want to book it, the, the opponent of mine has to take the fight. And I'm just appreciative of Vicente Luque taking this fight. So what was your, re I'm assuming you were ecstatic when they, uh, they you finally got that phone call? Man, man, bro, it's time to make this money now, you know, especially with getting the ranking and uh, putting myself in position uh, to work towards the title. You know, uh, this, this, this is what I've been waiting on since I got signed to the UFC, so I'm happy. Yeah, and I guess what do you feel like this does for you in your career, uh, getting that marquee name and, and I'm sure you, uh, you think you're going to go out there and win on Saturday. So if, if you do do what you're hoping to do, um, where do you think it puts you? Uh, not only do I know I'm going to do what I do, right, but the biggest thing is I know what position it's going to put me in when it comes to, you know, just the status of the UFC. And me now getting this ranking and, like I said, being put on route to become a world champion, I feel like I could do so much more, you know, outside of my just career as a fighter. And I can uh, come back home in St. Louis, man, and really put on. So, yeah. I was going to ask you about that, right? Because you finally get a fight uh, in Atlantic City in front of a crowd, and then they announced that St. Louis event right yeah, around yeah, the corner, yeah, too. Yeah. So, um, so we, got, we, got, we got some big moves uh, for St. Louis, but right now, man, we just focus on Vicente Luque, March 30th. Yeah, and I guess as an opponent, can you break him down a little bit, what he, we, what he presents to you, kind of what are you going to be careful of, um, what are you going to see on Saturday? Uh, I mean, it all depends. Uh, but I, I know that Vicente, uh, back in the day, you know how he fights. Um, He's always a pressure fighter. He's going to walk you down, you know, with hard pressure. He's going to take shots to give you one of his. Uh, but with the RDA fight, you know, he came in a little different. Uh, he was a little bit more tentative. He was on the back foot. So depending on what Luke comes in, I'm going to be more than prepared. Excited to, to fight in front of the, you know, a full crowd again as well? Yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be lit, man. Uh, this is my first time being in Atlantic City. Uh, I believe it's at the boardwalk, right? Uh, looks pretty big, you know what I'm saying? Looks massive. So uh, just seeing a full crowd there, I think it's going to be pretty ecstatic. All uh, right, next here. So obviously, you know, along with fighting, fame, you got the money that comes with it, but the ranking is important too. So was that ranking the sole or at least the main reason you're taking this fight short notice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, what, what short notice? Well, I guess it's not. Like, what short notice to you? I mean, for me, anything short notice because I don't fight. But <laughs> for you guys, I mean, I don't know, a month out, it's kind of uh, short notice, right? You know, this, this, this fight came right on time. Uh, people didn't know I was preparing for this fight in December uh, already. Um, I had uh, picked Shopcock and uh, Wonder Boy, and I had picked Ian, Gary, and Vicente to be the fight that, uh, that if anybody pulled out, that I'd be ready for. You know, and when that did happen, when uh, Ian Gary had his little tummy gate, you know, I was like, all right, bet, let's get it, you know. But Sean Shelby didn't reach out to me. Uh, my management didn't reach back out to me. So I'm like, ah, whatever. But let's stay ready just in case, you know, anything. And when I got the call for, you know, March 30th, this fight, this weekend, uh, I was more than prepared to take it because I was already training for it. And then, you know, you're taking on Luke. I know you're very focused on that fight, but could number eight, Sean Brady, who you're replacing, interest you next maybe? Uh... <laughs> After I beat Vicente Luque, the way I'm beat him, I don't think Sean Brady going to want to fight me. But we'll see. And then, you know, that was a good segue into my last question here. Obviously, anytime it's your fight week, we see the incredible knockout over Impa. And I'm just wondering, do you ever get sick of seeing that? Or could you watch that all day? Like, what are your thoughts on seeing that on the uh, timeline? Seeing what? Seeing what? Your, your crazy knockout, the, the back. Oh, no, I mean, <laughs> it wouldn't be me getting tired of seeing it, <laughs> I'll tell you that. Uh, but, you know, that, that kick is, a, you know, a beautiful situation for me because that's what started the spark. But I, I believe that with me, you know, transitioning my career at 170, you know, that's my story now. And that kick... You know, it, it really doesn't bring any, like, joy or anything to me because that's not my story, quote-unquote, you know. My story is becoming a world champion in the UFC, you know. Ampa was able to create a, 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 cra a great career after that, you know, kick for himself, you know, with winning the PFL title and, you know, uh, becoming a world champion and winning a million dollars. But I feel like my, sto my story starts right here at 170. Money. Oh, 
Oh, sorry, Ed. Ah, boy, we quick. <laughs> uh, yeah, kind of like piggybacking off of like the crazy knockout you had against him. Uh, performing here in Boardwalk Hall, you know, you're performing in a venue where like you know tons of legendary fighters have performed there over years. I guess like what's it mean knowing that you could potentially have a moment in an historic venue like this one? Uh, say it one more time. What, what if you if you have like another highlight real yeah. moment? Like what would it be like having it in a historic you know fighting venue like Boardwalk Hall? Uh, I mean, to have it here would would, would be amazing. I, I believe no matter where I fight on the face of the earth, it's always going to be historic, and uh, whatever I leave is always going to be a highlight. So uh, I believe that you know when me and Vicente go out there and fight. Uh, at the boardwalk, I believe that everybody's going to be excited to see something that they've never seen before. Uh, AC Mike Lopez here. Welcome to Atlantic City. Hey, man, appreciate you, man. Thank Super you. Glad to see that you're back also as well as uh, to piggyback uh, the UFC coming back to kind of where it got its uh, ground footing uh, back many years ago at the Trump Taj Mahal. Okay. And it's back here for the first time in six years, and we welcome you. Just to touch on what the gentleman was talking about, Boardwalk Hall, 1929. It has seen everything. You yeah. know, from Tyson to Spinks to Miss America to the UFC, yeah, yeah, and yeah. now to be back again in its, I like to say, home. Uh, what do you say about that? You know, again, what are you going to bring that crowd to? Uh, I, I think it's beautiful to be a part of history, man, be a part of, uh, you know, of names that, that I've looked up to or I've watched and be a part of, you know, an organization like the UFC. And now that it's back and now that it's here, you know, it's time for, you know, every fighter on the UFC, man, to show you know, uh, the crowd and give the people exactly what they want and what they've been waiting on. And that's exactly what I'm finna do come March 30th, this Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Is that it? Woody whoop whoop.